over to the uh, Thursday, June twenty second, <coughs> Webster Town Board workshop. Tonight we only have one agenda item, but I think it's a pretty exciting one. Josh Artuzo, our Director of Community Development, is going to do a presentation <coughs> on the West Webster Hamlet Revitalization Plan Recommendations and Next Steps. So, Josh, I'll hand the baton to you. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, so, tonight's agenda, I'm going to briefly go over the planning process and the schedule that this initiative uh, underwent. I'm going to provide an update on the last uh, public open house. Um, and I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because I'd like to spend the majority of the time on the plan recommendations as well as the implementation and next steps and allow for some questions and discussion at the <coughs> presentation. So in terms of the planning process and schedule that we went through, um, just to refresh everyone's memory, this was a $90,000 grant that, that we received uh, that we obtained on behalf of the town through the Genesee Transportation Council. Uh, there was a $10,000 town match. And essentially, there were nine tasks as part of our contract with uh, the Transportation Council. Um, we've since completed all nine of the tasks, which uh, lead us to a final plan report, which we will be uh, discussing tonight. So the project schedule, um, we kicked this off back in March of 2022. Uh, there were several committees formed. There was an internal committee, um, a technical committee comprised of both town staff, uh, representatives from Monroe County and New York State Departments of Transportation, uh, as well as a representative from the Transportation Council who funded the study. Um, that committee uh, met several times throughout the process to review uh, the consultant deliverables our consultant being Ingalls Planning and Design uh, and SRF Associates. And we also formed a citizen committee that was comprised of about 25 local residents, business owners, and other uh, neighborhood stakeholders. So uh, the various committees met throughout the process, as I said. Um, and yes, there were also three um, public input opportunities. The first one was last summer and it was virtual in nature. Um, some of you may remember um, they created a website, um, Social Pinpoint, where people could identify issues um, in the area on a map, um, give their uh, ideas and, and vision for what the future could hold for the neighborhood. And then we had two public open house events, uh, one in October and then another one in March. Um, the one in October was very well attended. I think we had over 70 uh, people from the community come. And the final uh, public open house, we had about 40 people. So we, we were happy with the level of uh, interest and community involvement throughout the process, which is always a good thing. So. The basic approach that our consultants used were basically, you know, where are we now? Uh, taking a look at the community profile, uh, various uh, collection of data and statistics on both the, uh, the people, the business, uh, and the condition of properties. Um, where do we want to go? So developing a future vision for the hamlet, and then how do we get there? which is developing an action plan that identifies priorities, outcomes, actions, uh, and responsible parties. So that was the theme of the approach throughout the entire study. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we did have a final round of public engagement at uh, Liberty Lodge in Finn Park back in March. And as I said, 40, about 40 people came um, the primary uh, goal of this particular one was we displayed the preliminary recommendations and had uh, opportunities for people to provide feedback and help prioritize the various um, different scenarios that were considered. 
so it really helped to focus <coughs> and identify what the top priority recommendations should be what the preferred uh, intersection configurations design themes and things of the, that nature um, there was strong support for for most if not all of the recommendations and as you'll see um, we will go through the specifics of those recommendations a little bit later um, so there's a West Webster concept plan which is a, a graphic illustration of some of the uh, themes and concepts that we'll be discussing and going through tonight then there's the land use and development uh, component of it that gets into zoning uh, setbacks and things that uh, kind of drive the physical uh, realm of the neighborhood and then you have the transportation and streetscape improvements um, and and trying to uh, improve and and develop a sense of place w when you enter into the hamlet um, you should know that you're within the hamlet so uh, this next slide here is the conceptual plan um, you can see the colored areas are basically these that's the entire study area um, the areas that are not grayed out and then as you could see the four corners uh, the intersection of Ridge Road and gravel really being the epicenter of the Hamlet area um, there were other areas identified for gateway opportunities uh, and those are are illustrated in the dotted white uh, circles so you have um, the intersection of Bay Road and Ridge on the western end of the study area uh, you have the intersection of Empire and gravel and you also have um, the intersection at Empire and Ridge and those those are really good uh, gateway opportunities uh, to really define entering into uh, what is really a distinct area as it exists now and we're just looking to improve upon that um, so there's various uh, transportation and streetscape uh, recommendations that are identified by the the blue dots with numbers and we will go through those in more detail um, so as a result of the analysis that the consultants did um, with consensus from the various uh, committees there really were three distinct uh, character areas within the study area based on the existing conditions um, so one of those character areas is the four corners um, it's characterized by smaller lot sizes uh, buildings that are relatively close to the street um, somewhat different in nature obviously than the larger commercial developments along Empire Boulevard uh, and then you have the north side of Empire um, really beginning where the Abbott's uh, location is all the way um, up to Empire on the north side has a fairly distinct uh, character in and of itself and then you have the south side of Empire where the movie theater and the bowling alley <coughs> uh, those are larger parcels with larger buildings so when we talk about future land use uh, basically we're looking to better define these three character areas um, so one of the recommendations for land use and development on the left hand side of your screen uh, you can see that there's a hodgepodge of several different uh, existing zoning districts everything from R3 single-family residential um, to higher density residential all the way up to uh, MC which is medium intensity commercial um, so how future zoning and land use would work with these character areas uh, essentially there's three um, districts or sub districts within the study area that there's uh, zoning changes proposed for uh, the first one being the Hamlet core which is identified in like an orangish color um, 
primarily in the in the area of ridge and gravel and that and along ridge road near that intersection um, that's characterized by smaller lot sizes um, less uh, required setbacks really trying to maintain that hamlet character and feel um, so the hamlet transition area is just to the south of that and that would be along the north side of empire boulevard um, which is currently mc um, again medium intensity commercial calls for fairly large lot sizes and pretty substantial uh, setbacks from the street um, and then obviously the the third one is on the south side of empire in the pinkish uh, salmon color and that would be um, recognizing that there's opportunity over time for these larger development parcels potentially for some mixed use redevelopment so those are the three um, main sub districts within the study area in terms of land use um, character areas so there's some illustrative examples of how this would actually physically come to fruition. So the Hamlet core, again, would be a combination of uh, vertical and horizontal mixed-use buildings. They'd be two to three stories, um, active ground floors uh, with lots of transparency at the ground level. Um, basically, near the street, high level of... Um, pedestrian friendly essentially making them walkable uh, the main entrances would be oriented to the street um, and then for the hamlet transition area which again is the north side of empire uh, this area would transition from like a larger commercial property uh, area along empire boulevard to the smaller hamlet scaled mixed use development so kind of like a transition <coughs> Um, and again, this would provide a mix of uses, uh, encourage cross uh, access for vehicles, uh, shared parking lots, <coughs> uh, enhanced landscaping treatments, especially in the front yards and, and visible from the street. And then for the south uh, side of Empire Boulevard, the Hamlet Corridor, um, Again, these are larger parcels with larger buildings, but um, they, they do provide opportunity for, over time, uh, redevelopment consisting of a mix of residential and commercial uses. Um, again, connecting with shared parking lots, pedestrian connections, um, dressing up the streetscape, it really all goes hand in hand to kind of tie the entire study area with its different characteristics together. So uh, there was a rendering put together uh, that kind of shows uh, the existing, what's now the Abbott's uh, ice cream shop um, with a more formalized uh, parking situation. Um, there's currently a vacant piece of land uh, directly to the east of the building um, and and what this graphic on the screen shows is a potential infill development on that vacant parcel while still um, you know containing the off-street parking defining the uh, ingress and egress of the parking lots um, as you could see there's the addition of sidewalks and crosswalks along Empire Boulevard uh, to improve uh, pedestrian safety. And again, here's another image of, of what that area could look like and the form that the buildings uh, would take in relation to the streets. Uh, then we go into the uh, Hamlet core area and this is a potential, I think you've all seen this image before, this, this is what um, the intersection of ridge and gravel could look like. 
if some of the recommendations uh, were to be implemented. Uh, that's actually a uh, rendering of what a um, rehabilitated 600 Ridge Road could potentially look like. <laughs> So another recommendation, uh, you know, building upon what I just mentioned, uh, would be to develop a mixed residential district um, to align with the future land use map. Uh, and this would primarily be from where the residential starts along Old Ridge Road, just east of Ridge and, Gra uh, yeah, Ridge and Gravel, uh, to the intersection of Bay and Ridge Road. Um, so this area is primarily single-family residential. There's a few uh, doubles uh, scattered in this stretch, um, but the, the plan recommends taking a look at potentially uh, permitting some other um, higher density type residential uses like duplexes and, and fourplexes. Um, this housing speaks to what they refer to as providing housing for the missing middle. Uh, these would be, um, high, as I mentioned, higher density, more units, um, and would provide, uh, you know, some nice infill development while still keeping in character with the uh, existing neighborhood. So another one of the recommendations would be to uh, implement a variety of green in infrastructure and improvements. Uh, these would most likely uh, coincide with any transportation project or, or road intersection reconfiguration. Um, obviously, we would encourage uh, st street trees and, and other green infrastructure uh, wherever appropriate. Um, so this slide is illustrating the preferred alternatives that were identified through the public uh, feedback and open house sessions. Um, the consultants provided a couple different options for each of the corridors. And this is all under the assumption that we're working within the existing right of way. So in terms of Old Ridge Road, uh, the preferred cross section includes sidewalks on both sides of the street, um, the addition of street trees and a, and a tree lawn, and then 11-foot uh, travel lanes with 5-foot sidewalks. Um, and this, this is actually feasible, as I said, within the town's existing right-of-way. Now, there might be some um, engineering details that need to be worked out. Um, but they have confirmed that this is doable. Um, and then in terms of gravel road, again, uh, the preference was for sidewalks on both sides of the street, um, just two travel lanes, 11 feet wide, and then um, the side with the fire department, the, the west side would have a seven foot uh, tree <coughs> lawn in between the sidewalk and the properties. <coughs> and a five-foot uh, tree area between the road itself and the sidewalk, which creates you know, a sense of safety for pedestrians walking on the sidewalk. And then again, uh, the preferred concept for Empire Boulevard was similar. Again, um, everyone was in favor of, of including sidewalks on both sides of the street, if possible. Um, there's obviously a significantly uh, larger right-of-way with Empire Boulevard, um, but it would still remain two travel lanes with a center, center turn lane. Um, and again, addition of sidewalks and street trees and tree lawns. Uh, going back to the whole concept of creating a m more defined sense of place, um, some of the elements that you can um, install or implement throughout the neighborhood to get that consistent feel and look uh, would be, you know, pedestrian amenities like park benches, uh, trash receptacles, um, 
street lights, banners, uh, things of that nature, uh, bicycle infrastructure, and it really just kind of ties the whole look and feel of the area together for a cohesive uh, visual. Um, so another transportation related recommendation uh, would be to implement access management practices for Empire Boulevard. Um, our code does already call for um, shared parking agreements wherever possible. However, this, this particular stretch of Empire Boulevard um, really has a lot of asphalt. There's not a lot of uh, defined entrances and exits to these buildings. So the thought is over time, as some of these sites uh, are redeveloped, um, we could then begin implementing the access management, potentially uh, reducing the number of uh, access drives, which also helps with the transportation, uh, the flow of transportation as well. M minimizes uh, vehicular and pedestrian conflicts and just um, provides a safer environment for pedestrians. So one of the specific recommendations for uh, the intersection of gravel and empire is, is an intersection realignment that would essentially take gravel road and curve it south uh, to line up with Empire Boulevard as a T intersection rather than the current Y, I guess you would say. Um, so it would include new um, ADA compliant curb ramps, associated pedestrian features, um, countdown signals, high visibility crosswalks, and it would align with a new um, access road uh, that would be in between an existing plaza and the AMC theater. Obviously, uh, this would require installation of a new traffic signal where there isn't one that currently exists, um, but it would definitely help with pedestrian crossings. Um, you know, as I'm sure you know, there's been there's been some accidents over the years in this stretch of Empire, um, and and we believe that this intersection reconfiguration would uh, help a great deal on a number of items. Um, another major recommendation is some roadway and streetscape improvements along Gravel Road. Uh, again, connecting the four corners of the hamlet uh, to other areas, new crosswalks, uh, new sidewalks. Again, um, ADA compliant curb ramps on the corners and really just um, giving an opportunity to connect the southern portion with, with the central portion of the study area. Um, another potential uh, recommendation that we would want to consider is the intersection of Ridge Road and Empire Boulevard. Um, <coughs> and the way that <coughs> it is being proposed here uh, would would create minimal changes. Essentially, you'd be um, trying to formalize more of a, a corner rather than a shoot off of Empire Boulevard. Uh, and you could do that in a couple different ways, um, either raising the area slightly with a mountable curb and concrete treatment or coloring the pavement in a way that uh, notifies the driver that you're not supposed to be traveling uh, in this area. And the thought would be to really slow down um, the traffic in that area, providing an, a new formalized pedestrian crossing at this location uh, that lines up with the, the bowling alley. And the addition of a sidewalk on the south side of Ridge Road um, to, so that residents could traverse you know, from the Hamlet core over to some of the commercial businesses to the east. Um, so another 
Another intersection reconfiguration uh, is Bay Road and Old Ridge Road. And the thought here would be uh, to potentially reduce one of the travel lanes along Bay Road and replace with landscaping. Um, that would shorten the pedestrian crossings. Uh, it would create, again, visual uh, enhancements for the pedestrian and improved amenities. Um, again, curb ramps, signals, and things of the, that nature. So here is kind of a, a map, a singular map showing what I've just described in more detail. Um, sidewalks, our proposed sidewalks are indicated in the orange dotted lines. Um, the conceptual intersection realignments um, are circled in blue and the entire study area being outlined in yellow. So it, when we talk about trying to strengthen a sense of place, um, we wanted to think about what, what would be an appropriate theme. Um, so we did come up with a variety of potential themes that were discussed and reviewed and voted on by the various committees. And what was ultimately um, agreed upon, and, or there was the most consensus on, was uh, the theme of it being a vintage area. You know, there's a lot of history in, in this area. Um, the old trolley line used to go up and down Old Ridge Road. Um, there was the ice house. There was the drive-in movie theater. And a lot of the discussions, you know, surrounded you know, paying tribute to the old days. So ultimately, the, um, the proposed theme in terms of signage, um, streetscape enhancements, uh, banners, icons, um, essentially follows the uh, vintage historical theme. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're looking <coughs> at are potential uh, signage and lighting opportunities wayfinding, gateways um, with the vintage theme. And that was, uh, there was pretty strong consensus that that, that fit um, this area the most. So now in terms of uh, another recommendation that came out of the plan was enhanced code enforcement. So um, obviously, the town board just passed a property maintenance chapter at its last meeting. We will begin to utilize uh, the tools that we will have for a focused code enforcement uh, initiative in this area to try and get some immediate visual improvements. And then another uh, recommendation is to establish the hamlet as a priority investment zone. Now, I'm not exactly uh, all that familiar with, with that. We would have to do a little more research, um, but that is being recommended nonetheless. So in terms of implementation, um, there are a total of 14 recommendations that that came out of the plan, and it's it's been they've been identified in an implementation matrix that lists the recommendation. Uh, it identifies a rough cost estimate to what some of these um, projects you know might might cost. Uh, it identifies potential funding sources, whether it be grant opportunities, um, you know the various grant grants that are out there for both transportation and, um, you know, building rehabilitation potentially. Uh, then it identifies uh, what, what parties should be involved, you know, who, who should be leading this particular effort, whether it be the town, um, the state, the county, et cetera. And then what is the desired timeline? Um, so short term, 
is generally within the next year or so. Um, medium term goals would be anywhere from two to five years and then there's some longer term goals that we realize uh, may take a little bit longer perhaps five to ten years um, so as I mentioned 14 recommendations um, we have identified priority recommendations uh, ones that there the team felt should be pursued first and foremost um, so one of the major ones is to uh, refine and adopt the Hamlet mi mixed use district to align with the future land use map so we'll have to have further discussions and we'll have a, a much more detailed workshop I think to to discuss the, the proposed uh, code revisions but that is nonetheless um, one thing that we feel is pretty important uh, the reason being you know there's the Jade Palace uh, site there's the former Webster furniture stripper site and the current zoning uh, that's in place today really limits the the opportunity to redevelop those properties um, so we feel that um, it's important to um, tackle that as one of our main main priority recommendations uh, in the near future um, then obviously implementing some of the preferred streetscape improvements uh, there are a lot of them being proposed we recognize that it may not be feasible to tackle the entire area all at once um, but we have nonetheless identified the central point the intersection of ridge and gravel as being one of the top priorities uh, for improvements um, yeah gravel road being top priority and then a portion of uh, ridge road as well from cane patch to empire um, so again uh, here's a conceptual plan um, I won't go through each of the 14 recommendations again because I covered most of them in in earlier slides but I also wanted to mention you know we did receive some feedback from some business owners um, particularly uh, on the Abbott site and you know there were concerns about losing parking or you know based upon some of these proposed uh, recommendations uh, but really um, Matt Chatfield from WIDA kind of did a, a quick sketch and it was further further refined by our consultants and um, basically to show that even with some of the proposed recommendations limiting access points uh, constructing sidewalks uh, if you create a more formalized parking situation um, you know well-defined spaces with lines and a circulation pattern that makes sense you could actually um, maintain or even increase the number of parking spaces uh, that are available for nearby businesses so that's what um, this next uh, visual is essentially showing um, the Abbott's building and then the yellow building being a new structure that's on a on what's currently a vacant <coughs> piece of land uh, again a substantial amount of off-street parking even with um, the improvements in place so these are just uh, some more visual examples of of what the development alternatives could look like um, so this would be for the Empire Boulevard North section the transition area between suburban and urban um, showing improved pedestrian connections uh, directly from the sidewalk to the businesses uh, tree lawns that get the pedestrian uh, far from vehicular traffic um, reduction of the uh, access points more well-defined access points with landscaping treatments 
uh, that just really improve the visual aesthetics of the area. Um, now this, this is a conceptual rendering of what that could look like over time as redevelopment occurs. And then um, this area, again, just shows a more uh, higher density urban feel, pedestrian scaled amenities and signage, um, a mix of uses, both commercial and residential, um, and some of the same themes of shared parking, um, reduced access points, and just improving the walkability of the area. So this, this next uh, visual is a conceptual rendering of a potential redevelopment scenario for the AMC uh, theater site. You could still have one large anchor building with several uh, smaller um, outbuildings that have a mix of uses, pedestrian connections, open space, green space, and landscaping. Um, more attractive than a sea of asphalt. So that brings us to our next steps. Um, so the final draft of the plan has been completed and provided to the town. Um, we're here tonight on June 22nd uh, giving this presentation to the town board. Um, the next step would be to uh, either formally accept or adopt the plan um, so that it has the endorsement of the official endorsement of the town. Um, we would look to come back and, and pursue the zoning changes this fall. Um, and then Matt and Wida and others would pursue um, transportation grants in the next round of funding that I believe will be coming in the fall of this year. And then we would continue to work on implementing the rest of the recommendations um, based on the implementation matrix that I went over previously. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. When was that picture taken? Yeah. What? Is oh, is it? Downtown, right at the four corners. Is that the one with the boat? And yeah. That picture was taken last summer. Wow. Well, pictures worth a thousand words, and, 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 and you know, enhanced code enforcement stuff are going to help that area. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like short term from the aesthetics standpoint, it'll help a lot. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, we want to keep the momentum rolling. Um, there's been a great deal of interest in this project. Um, this is just one component of a larger effort to right. help revitalize this area. Um, so I would like to thank our consultants, uh, Matt Ingalls from Ingalls Planning and Design and Andy uh, as well as SRF and all of the uh, citizen and um, business owners that participated on the various committees. Uh, that's I've that's key, and I'm, I'm uh, done a lot of work on this, and to have the uh, the business owners and residents buy in is uh, pretty significant going forward. Yes, to your point, keeping the men, m momentum going. And as you know, now that now that we have a plan document that has community support, right, it helps strengthen our opportunity to pursue grant funding. Yes. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, thank Josh, his team. I want to thank the town board. This is and, and Matt, of course. This is a pretty dynamic project. Um, you're putting forward, a, I mean, a fairly detailed plan of what a portion of the town that's sort of laid fallow for decades um, and really gone into disrepair and disuse and can be done. I, I, it's it's this is. I'm pretty impressed, all I can say. I, I've got a question, though. You're talking about considering zoning changes. Um, 
We would have to consider, you're, you're, you're saying consider zoning changes. This is probably more discussion rather than the actual changes themselves. Well, we were provided with a draft ordinance that the consultants prepared. So we do have a fairly clear um, idea. So this would be for the new, the new districts or the new types of zoning? Correct. And getting rid of the old ones, basically? Correct. Okay. Probably, I mean, part of what we should maybe do, and I'm sure it's probably going to be considered as part of the um, comprehensive plan, is, is to maybe some of these old, older or existing uh, categories might be done away with entirely. Uh, Potentially. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of very s small um, districts that probably should be redone and sort of it's a misuse really of zoning when you have small districts and uh, um, like you have here a right. mix a mix of, of, of yeah various kinds of commercial and residential it's, it just it doesn't look good it doesn't make sense because it defeats the whole purpose of having a zoning code anyway but what about um, contacting the state I mean the, obviously Empire Boulevard is a state road correct and gravel is a town road right gravel is a county, county. Road. it's a county road. road and what about Ridge Ridge, Ridge is, is a town, town road I'm sorry it's town Ridge is a town yes that's interesting so Ridge old Ridge Road is a town road yep. gravel is county yep correct. So, all right so we've got so a, we've got we all would, agencies we would be dealing with um, with the but obviously New York State the Department of Transportation but also the county Correct. All right. <clears throat> and they, they did, they were represented throughout the whole process, yeah. they said, on our committee, so that they do have buy-in mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. Obviously, there'd have to be more detailed engineering um, done to make sure that everything's feasible, yeah. but, um, yeah. And, and just to that point, Charlie, you're going to kick out of this, I think, that <clears throat> was it last spring that we got the... the New York State Department of Transportation, Monroe County Department of Transportation, Matt, a posse of us walked that whole perimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of 22. And let me tell you something, you walk down Empire Boulevard, you get a real feel for how that is a racetrack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and looking at the facial expressions of the MCDOT and the NYS DOT reps. It's, it's uh, intentional. I brought everybody yeah. out there on foot on purpose. It was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, and then they, no. yeah, no, it was, you know, and I, you know, all jokes aside, we've had, we've had accidents, fatalities up there in the last few years, it's not, you know, it's no joke, but this boardroom, I think there was five or six at least meetings that there were 15 people at the bingo tables uh, at these meetings, very robust conversation. I mean, what ended up being, you know, the end product here, uh, Ingalls and Matt and Department of Transportation and some of our department heads. I mean, there's, it was something. It was, it was something. So. Well, it's very interesting, though, the town's the one that, that to use a phrase, took the bull by the horns here and decided that they're going to make these changes. Because you're dealing with various jurisdictions and various uh, municipalities who have an interest in it. Yes. I love your term fallow, by the way. You know, um, do you think we intentionally left that field fallow over there for 20 years? Or? Which one? You want on, on gravel? Well, you're yeah. the one that called that area fallow. I mean, I hope anybody watching at home or whatever understands well, I was thinking, the, the I farmer was thinking, relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm really impressed with this, this entire presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm struck by the traffic calming portions of this and how much... I mean, I can just see the benefit of that from the illustrations and the, the diagrams of what you're planning to do. I think it's fantastic, uh, or what, what's been proposed. Um, it's no secret, this, this is where my husband and I bought our first home on Old Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. And um, as much as we considered it a neighborhood, even down in the more residential area, it was somewhat of a speedway coming through there between Bay Road and Gravel. Um, it's, it is very historic. The home that we purchased had been built in 1850-something. Um, and some of them along there are still very well kept up. There's a one-room schoolhouse there. 
um, this is this just presents so much opportunity and I like the way it it really blends all of the multimodal aspects that would be present there as far as bicycles and pedestrians and it, and it creates um, an opportunity for all in a very safe way uh, you know sometimes people just have to be shown the idea before they can really see what it, it, it could be and I, I hope that this um, continues to spark even some out outside interest as far as development and what could be there. Yeah, show, and, show them the plan and they will go. Yes. <laughs> Charlie, and, and to your, when you look at this screenshot that's up there right now, which is the last of the presentation, um, you know, the plan acceptance adoption, um, yeah, you know, I think you said it, Josh. If, if the board makes a move to do that in some type of resolution, that's foundational to any like grant applications because the grant is saying, "Well, are you on a fishing trip for this, or is the town acknowledged that they're um, behind it?" And I think that's important to understand that because, first of all, there's 14 suggestions here. What happens in the next 10 years, I'm sure, will will deviate significantly from. This is, a, this is a blueprint. We paid for this from Ingalls and whatever. It, it'll morph. I believe that, in, especially depending upon funding opportunities, Matt, Matt and whatever. Then the consider the zoning changes. Consider. Define consider in the fall of 2023. Does that mean we're making zoning changes? No, consider doesn't mean making. Yeah, I want to make sure I understand what... Yeah, I struggled with what word to put there, to be honest with you. Um, I would I would prefer to pursue zoning changes. I just didn't know. Uh, I wanted to just throw it out to see how the board felt first. And we could certainly have a more detailed discussion on what those proposed changes are. Um, I just didn't want to get into that level of detail tonight. No, sure, and I, I guess where you had answered, and Matt, uh, you corroborated, the adoption resolution is somewhat foundational to any grant applications you make. Um, is the zoning changes foundational to any grant uh, applications you make? because we have a story to tell. We're about to venture into our comprehensive plan, so you, know, you can make an argument that, yeah, we'll do these zoning changes within yeah. that process. But I want to make sure- I the timing you know, to do that with, with the comprehensive plan and what we're considering here. Yeah. For in line. You would so think. I, 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 wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind having discussions on more detailed zoning changes. First, I have to speak for myself. Yeah. I just well, you already get, you said no. Nah, I don't think that it would be. It wouldn't hold us up from getting some of these funding opportunities to start some of these more priority uh, initiatives. No. Um, okay. I think whatever resolutions the town board undertakes in regard to this, particularly in the near future, clearly have to be in conjunction with Matt's advice and. Council on grant applications and the wording that we have to put in there. So, uh, you have some idea, I assume, of what we need to put in the resolutions, correct? I, I could assist. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you, Josh. Mm -hmm. Jenny? Josh, thank, thank you very you much. Well, You're welcome. The, I hope it you know, comes to fruition. Yeah. It's a long time coming. It's a nice enhancement of our West, West Webster community. Thanks, Matt, too. You know, about three quarters of the way in when it said Abbott's uh, thing, I said, like, well, what does Bill got? What, what did Bill have here? Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> wish I had Abbott's. <laughs> he's got Abbott's site. He's the, main, he's the main shareholder. How's your site, Bill? I know you wear glasses. Uh, <laughs> Believe me, if I owned it, I'd be really happy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, yeah. And I'd well, be happy to be your friend. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know? me too. I was going to say, me too. It's my coat. Yeah, I got it in the car. Thanks. Well, listen, uh, that was great. This is it for two weeks. 
We don't have another board meeting until the 6th of July, right. a regular board meeting at 7.30. So happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Thank you. Thank you.